Hi everybody, how you doing? Hello. Hi, uh, this is my sister-in-law, Renee davis Brame. Hello. Uh, Renee has been an actor for most of her life. Mm -hmm. um, she's married to my incredibly lucky younger brother, Aaron. That's right. Um, so, so we're gonna talk a little <laughs> bit about Renee's career in the theater mm -hmm. um, and what Renee does to prepare for um, each role. So, for starters, so Renee, if you yes. wouldn't mind, mm -hmm. um, could you please tell us a little bit about your history in the theater, when you got interested in doing it, um, sure. and how that developed. Okay. So, um, all of my life, um, I have been very interested in music. I've just always loved music. I've loved singing. And so I started there in junior high school. I sang in a choir, and then I got interested in um, acting when we had a special Black History Month program, and I was asked to play Harriet Tubman. I was very excited. I um, borrowed a skirt from my mother and um, got all dressed up. I had a monologue as Harriet. I uh, forgot my words in the middle of it and there was a cafeteria full of people. And so I started crying. And then as soon as I started crying, I remembered the words and I finished the monologue through the tears and no one realized that I was crying because I forgot my words. They thought I was just a really good actor and I was hooked from then on from then on. I think that was eighth grade, and then I did um, every play I possibly could starting in high school. I did community theater, I did theater at my school, and then I went to college for it uh, after that. Uh, how many plays do you traditionally perform in a year? In a These year. days, yes. These days, so um, I have two kids. They're very small or small-ish. Um, so these days I perform maybe once, twice a year if I'm lucky. Uh, when I was doing it professionally, I would do maybe one every, say, three months. So I, would, I could do probably four in a year. So that's a lot of lines you have to memorize. Yeah. A lot of, a lot of rehearsal, mm -hmm. a, lot of, um, a lot of acting. It's All right. Whole life. Okay, so uh, we are going to talk a little bit about the play we're reading today. Uh, we've been reading the last few days, um, and Renee was nice enough to go through uh, a couple of the scenes and mark the scenes up mm -hmm. as if she were acting in the role of Helena. So, um, so the first thing that I would I, I would ask you before we even get to that, um, so many of you guys are going to be performing uh, here in a few days. Actually, all of you Yay. are for a grade. Um, so what advice do you have, Renee, for some, let's say, reluctant actors who might not feel as comfortable as others um, in embodying their, their roles? Sure. So um, something that um, is often said about actors is that they are um, sort of all about themselves. And um, in a way, that's very true, but it's because you have to be. So if you are nervous, what you need to remember is that this is all about you. It's not about anyone else and that this is just for you. And keep keep that in your mind. So what you wanna do before you start is you wanna just get some of that physical energy going and that's really gonna help. So you wanna take some deep breaths in, count in for five and out very, very slowly. You wanna shake it, shake, 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 shake. Make sure that your shoulders are not up by your ears but down. Make sure your shoulders are down and that you're just open and ready to go. Something you might also want to do is just lots of stuff with your mouth and just wake your, wake your face up. Most importantly though, remember this is about you. It's your time to just relax and say some words. That's all you gotta do. Don't be too critical. Don't be too hard on yourselves, right? Nope. Okay. Nope, nope, nope. Okay, so let's talk about marking up. All right, so you all have this in front of you. Mm -hmm. So, Renee, you used four different symbols here to mark up this text. So let's talk about what these symbols are. Okay, sure. So if you look at the handout there, page nine. So um, what I did for our purposes is I marked up the English. So you've got some German on here, but look at the English. Um, so, for example, we're going to look at this very first line, Kashmir. Did I say it right? I think so. Kashmir. So sorry, sir, and then you'll see there's an ellipse, so three dots there. Um, take, take advantage of that, take a cue from that, and what I did is I put a slash, so that tells me I need to take a pause. 
So, so sorry, sir. We got lost. And then if you look at how I did it, um, I sort of broke this up like the person was nervous. So they didn't want to talk a lot. So they just kept pausing. So, so sorry, sir. We got lost. I'm so sorry. So if you'll see under so, I put a, um, underlined it. So that's a, an emphasis on that word. Instead of saying, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. So there's that first line. Um, and then if you look down to the second time that Terrence speaks after Helena, he um, asks the question, I beg your pardon. And what you wanna do, at least for now, is to turn all of your questions up at the end. You've got a better chance of sounding like you really want to know the answer. So instead of saying, I beg your pardon, you say, I beg your pardon, because it, inst it just naturally lifts everything up and makes you sound like you're really genuinely asking a question. Um, there's something that you'll learn later where um, you can earn not asking the question, but that's for advanced acting 405 way down the line next next year next year um, so that's two of the marks and then if you go down towards the bottom of the page it's another one of Terrence's lines he says this is uh, no I'm sorry a Helena's line underneath that it says mr. Aldridge dot 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 is so what I did there is I decided to not take the cue from the ellipse which would indicate a pause and I decided to connect those two words together. So there's sort of a bridge there between Aldridge and is. So instead of saying Mr. Aldridge is, you would say Mr. Aldridge is. So that's just bridging those words together. It just means just keep on talking. And the whole purpose of doing this is so that you can rehearse and know as you read this and know what these symbols mean mm -hmm. and know exactly how to say every single word. Is yeah. that the case? Yeah, it helps with consistency if you're ever going to do this more than once. If you're going to say, do this, rehearse, and then do it in front of your class, um, you won't be so nervous if you know, I'm going to bridge these two words together, I'm going to pause here. It just sort of takes some of that guesswork out and makes you feel a little more confident. Um, and what I would suggest w when you're marking this up is to say the words out loud, and a lot of this will come naturally you'll feel where there are pauses or where you want to connect words and just go with your instincts. That's awesome advice. All right, uh, any closing thoughts there? Renee. Closing thoughts, what were my closing thoughts? Um, oh yes, closing thoughts. So you're gonna do this and you're gonna rehearse it. So after you've rehearsed it, if there's something that you feel like, well, that pause didn't work there, don't ever feel like anything is set in stone. Feel free, go back, erase, redo, Keep it going until you feel comfortable with it. And uh, just remember, this is all about you. It's to make you um, feel good and to help you understand everything a little bit better. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for your time. You're welcome. All right. Goodbye. Bye.